Good morning. It's good to see you and a great pleasure to welcome all of you to morning worship in Lawson Memorial. There's a special welcome to any returning from their summer break and, of course, all those visiting. We're always happy to see visitors amongst us and we hope you enjoy being with us here. There's another special welcome to the youngsters with us this morning. No doubt all of you are so looking forward to getting back to school on Tuesday. Yeah. Any young visitors are invited to go across to the hall with the others after time with the youngsters. And if you're under three and uh, mum or dad can take you to the creche in the small hall and leave you there in safe hands. As always, we want everyone to know how welcome we all are here in God's house. So let's turn to those near us, especially those we don't know well, and share the warmest of greetings, if you wish, signing the message, God loves you. Reverend Carden will no doubt be reporting on a busy week at Holiday Club, Mega Makers, and yesterday's fun day. By all accounts, the youngsters had a great time, and Carden and her tired but healthy, happy helpers, that was difficult to see, <laughs> also, also enjoyed themselves after a fashion with so many young participants and even managed to cope with a bunch of not-so-young, unexpected visitors. Folks, you would really be amazed at how much work and effort goes into arranging and running the holiday club, as well as preparing and setting up the fun day. So let's show our appreciation to Karen and all her helpers for their hard work. Well done. With the end of the school holidays, our popular free breakfast club also ends. And here again, we must thank all those who gave so generously of their time and talents in serving the meals. Well done. You weren't paying attention. <laughs> The summer mini shop has also closed its door, um, but has been replaced by our goodest new pop-up shop, the better than ever 2022 version in the marquee, starting tomorrow, 15th August, until Saturday, 1st October. Open every weekday, 10 to 4 o'clock, and 10 to 1 o'clock on Saturdays giving all customers the chance to pick up a bargain in clothing, footwear, hats, toys, books, or bric-a-brac, and there'll be a copy for really good customers. This is a much-needed fundraising effort, so we'd be happy to accept any good-as-new articles you no longer have a need for. Yes, it's almost back to business as usual, Lawson Tots toddle back into the hall at 9.30 on Wednesday morning and again on Friday morning. On Thursday, our midweek reflective service allowances is back at 11 o'clock. The Lunch Club Super Soup Plus service will once again be dished up at 11.45. The Craft Cuppy and Chat Group get together 2 to 4 o'clock, hoping to see familiar faces back again and welcoming new ones. And why not try out the men's prayer group at 7.30? You'll be made very welcome there as well. The youth clubs and drop zone are both back a week on Friday. That's the 26th of August at the usual times. And next Sunday, morning worship is at 11 again with the return of Sunday school and teen scene. I'm sure that, like me, you can't wait for this coming Saturday 20th because we have the Church Guild coffee morning in the hall from 10 o'clock to 11.30. It just can't be true. 
lots of lovely ladies serving lovely coffee with lovely home-baked treats, the usual stalls, convivial company, all for just three pounds each, so don't miss it. Here again, all donations will be very much appreciated. Baking should be wrapped by the home baker and ingredients listed for allergens. And finally, as always, all of you are invited across to the church hall this morning after the service for a cuppy and a large slice of Lawson hospitality before you go home. Folks, it really is good to come together to worship God. We sing as introit to this morning's service, Go Tell It on the Mountains. Please stand to sing. off with a theme to get us ready. It was louder and louder, that call of the Lord Jesus Christ and the word that Jesus is coming was getting louder and louder 
and it has done throughout the centuries. And it's important that we hear that call and continue to shout it out today. And at that time, we were all excited, waiting for the start of Holiday Club. And I have to say that we're here seven days on, and I'm still just as excited as I was this time last week. And as with every, any family event, you know, if you've gone away somewhere, maybe you've been on holiday, or you've been away to see something, and you meet up with the rest of the family, and they get bored silly while you tell them all about it, well, I'm afraid I'm going to be telling you all about it, and everybody at home as well, because it was a brilliant event. But I hope that rather than you being bored silly, that you can get involved with the excitement and allow that same excitement to be infectious, that you would feel it as well. So because this is all about what happened with all of the youngsters, we're going to have for our next song very much a youngster's song, one about God's love being the best love that the world has ever known. <coughs> now, you know the tune? It's the Flintstones. And there's some actions, so if you want to join in with the actions, just follow me. But let's stand and sing God's love is the best love. <coughs> God's, God's love, love is the best love that the world has ever, ever known. Deeper than the deep sea, it's a love that only God has shown. Higher than the rockets out of space, wider than the total human race. God's love is the best love that the world has ever, ever, has ever, ever, will ever, ever know. That's a rehearsal. Okay. We'll sing it for real this time. So here we go. God's, God's love, love is the best love, love that the world has ever, ever known. Deeper than the deep sea it's a love that only God has shown. Higher than the rockets out of space. Wider than the total human race. God's love is the best love that the world has ever, ever, has ever, ever, will ever, ever know. Thank you. So we're going to talk to God just now. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you for that eternal and everlasting and powerful love that you have shown to our world from the beginning of time. Forgive us when we just seem to fall through life, getting involved in our own little bubble and don't even notice it. For your desire is to be involved in our lives. Your desire is to be able to help us to get the best out of life. Your desire is for us to build a kingdom for all to live in, where the possibilities are for everyone to, to not just survive, but to thrive. And we ask you, Lord, to forgive us when instead of building that kingdom, we seem to get in the way. Forgive us, Lord, for when we let you down, when our attitudes let you down, when our words let you down. And as we are here today, may we rejoice in your presence. For you promised that where two or three came together in your name, you would be here. And so we rejoice in your presence this morning. And we ask that you would touch our hearts, that you would transform our lives, that you would teach us and lead us and guide us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, so it's for me to tell you what an exciting time we had. We have to be honest and say, this was the first time since lockdown that we've been able to run our holiday club. And we were kind of scratching our heads a little bit and saying, what is it we did again? 
And we were even saying, will anybody even come? Because we haven't had the chance to see everybody. And we had seen some people because of Breakfast Club. And for the first time ever, because we had the marquees, we could run Breakfast Club as well. So parents could come and get their breakfast and younger children could stay and play. I always felt terrible when people would bring their children to the holiday club, but it was for primaries one to seven, with good reason. The younger they are, the more help you need. So when the little ones would come in with a little lip sticking out, I would have to say, I'm so sorry, sweetheart, maybe next year. But that now, they can play out in the marquee and have great fun as well. And it wasn't just about the fact that we played and had fun, because we did, but we heard all about the love of God and the things that Jesus did. On day one, we were talking about the tax collector Matthew. Nobody liked tax collectors in Jesus' day, and it has to be said, they're not really high up on our Christmas card list even today. And most people wouldn't have bothered about someone like Matthew. In fact, that wasn't the kind of company that you would want to keep. And so for Jesus to say, I want you to come and follow me, was amazing for Matthew and other tax collectors who were shunned by the local society. And we realized then that God welcomes everyone. His love is wider and wider than we could ever begin to imagine. And every day, we would start off over, we would come here, we'd get the, the, the basic story, go over to the hall, do our craft. We would come back for snack, and the place was full of tables, and all the children had their snack. And then after snack, there was actually probably three cheeky monkeys that then retold the story. I would say a few words and then leave it to the other two. That on the, the, the little one on the right hand, your right hand side, that's Mavis, and the other side, Marvin, okay? And they joined us every day and retold the story in their own way. And then the children would go back over to the hall. There was a Bible books and, and Bible sheets to look at as well as drama before the end of the day. We also started the day with a warm-up song, which we're going to do today, and I've suddenly realized that the little rat bags have all cleared off and left me to do it. What's that all about? Anyway, anyway, Jonathan knows it. He's going, no. (laughs) So... On to day two, and we heard the story of Jesus in the boat, in the storm. And what we did, we had our own storm up here. We had a big parachute and a little paper boat. And the waves got bigger and bigger as the boat had to go from one side of the lake to the other and try and survive. And the disciples, those early followers of Jesus, had to learn to trust in Jesus now. He's here the one that we've been waiting for, and they had to learn to trust him, just as we have to learn to trust him. We had to learn that he would be there. Don't forget that some of the people on that boat were fishermen. It was the day job. And Jesus will turn up right where you are in your day job and whatever you're doing. But it is also quite good to call on him when things get pretty tough and to trust him. On to day three, and we heard about Jesus bringing a little girl who had died back to life. Not only had she died, but the funeral party were already there singing their sad songs. And they laughed at Jesus when he put them out. And yet he just lifts the little girl back up and she was fine. And we had to realize that Jesus' power is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And what we did was we really tested things. When we went through to the hall, they had a, something to try and do. What you see there, that little tower, that's being made with spaghetti and marshmallows. Not the strongest things in the world, but to make a strong tower so that we could get our heads around the fact that with Jesus, we might not be very strong, but with Jesus, we can be stronger and stronger. Then, words started to get round. There's nothing quite like 
You know when somebody goes away and says, oh, we were having great fun, come along, come along, come along. Now, I don't know who it was that said come along, but we had a new recruit on day four. And in the afternoon of day three, oh, sorry, just before they left in day three, I, I said to the boys and girls, we have a special visitor coming tomorrow. And they all went, Santa! <laughs> and I thought, oh, I feel bad now because they're going to be so disappointed. But, 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 somebody else came along, a surprise visitor, um, when the first minister arrived on site, so she could also hear about what we were doing, and she could also hear about the love of Jesus. At the, in the middle picture there, that's the two lilies. They were all busy making masks when she appeared, and they got the whole story from her. I hardly had to say a word. The kids were great. And they made the first minister a mask that she took with her. Um, so spent, the, spent some of the morning here with us, and we did have a really good time which was just as well because day four was a sad one because we were hearing about the cross of Jesus and that love of Jesus was so strong. And the question that I said to the children was, why didn't he just run away? He could have just gone. They wouldn't have got him. They'd be glad that he'd gone. But he always stayed with us. He went through tougher times than we did. He always stayed with us. And so that was a bit of a tough one as we had to sit and we heard about Jesus going to the cross. It all seemed so unfair. He hadn't done anything wrong. In fact, he'd been brilliant just because other people are jealous or want more power. But I did say to them before they went away, don't be too sad because you've got to remember it's Jesus that we're talking about. And so day five, it was realizing that Jesus had done it, that he'd beaten the power of evil, that he'd broken through death itself, and that he was back. And what's more, he could be with us forever and ever. Now, I didn't just tell the story myself. I had my whole team of puppet friends over at that side, to help me. Is this my mic, by any chance? Oh, it's that one. So um, I had my whole team of puppet friends over at that side. We had drama every day, and the drama had similar themes, okay? In the middle picture at the top, you can see the person who we would normally think of as Chloe Balfour, she became doctor up to no good. And she had a vicious water pistol that soaked us nearly every day. And in the one at the bottom, you can see her getting arrested and led off. But each one showed us just a little bit more. Every single drama was the same kind of theme to help us to understand the theme of the day. And then this little fella was so excited. I must show you this. What do you think of that? Wasn't that amazing? The next time you see at Christmas time one of those dancing Santas, you'll know where they got the idea from. Absolutely amazing. Now that might have been the kind of the holiday club kind of coming to an end, but we still had the fun day to go. And what a crowd we had yesterday in all that heat. So we had those who got wet and they got very wet. We had those who were painted, they had glitter tattoos, or oh, the whole face has to be said, I nearly forgot I had a wedding in the afternoon. I was gonna go and get my face painted. That would have looked good on the pictures after. <coughs> and there was those who bounced around for quite some time as well. And outside too, we had the obstacle course, we had another special visitor. Mickey Mouse came. Wow. I think the kids were far more excited about that. And loads of them got pictures taken with Mickey. And I must admit, even I kind of got into the groove a wee bit. <laughs> Here we go. 
go fuck you, what's in us doing? By the time we got into the day. So we were all having the best of fun and the best of parties, celebrating that we had had a brilliant, brilliant time. Yeah, I can keep it going for a whole track. I got taught by the best. Chloe Lucas taught me. Okay, so fantastic fun. All, uh, all morning yesterday, in fact, until one o'clock. In fact, sometimes what happens with the holiday club day is people start to drift. Um, and we needed them to drift because we had to get tidied up for the wedding to come. And folks were having such a good time chilling and hanging about that they didn't want to go. But isn't that wonderful? And absolutely amazing. But the other thing is, it doesn't stop there. We can't let it stop there. Because we have to do more and more. The whole purpose of last week was talking about how Jesus, if you like, can make us mega. Us, ordinary human beings, he can make us mega. And we were learning about it last week. We were getting more and more excited as the week went on. But it's for us to tell everybody else and let everyone else know. Well, how do we do that? Well, it starts by sharing about what good fun we had and sharing the stories that we were told. And then, now I know Holiday Club isn't on for a whole year, but you know what? We've still got Sunday school. We've still got messy church. We've still got loads of opportunities. We'll be having breakfast club in the next lot of holidays. There's a lot we can do, and we can spread that story of the Lord Jesus Christ and how mega he is and how mega he can make us. So... We've got to do this holiday club song that had all the actions in. There's one or two folks here that were here last week. You're going to come and give me a hand. They're all going, ooh. Anybody going to come? You know how to do it. Probably better, than, probably better than I do. Anybody want to come and give me a hand to do this holiday club song? Jonathan, go on, go on, go on, go on. You're going to have to remind me of the actions. Yes. Do you want to play it from there? Channel two. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. You've got to remind me of the actions, okay? And tell you what, what will be good is that everybody out there can join in actions. If you're going to join in actions, though, you might want to move into the middle wee bitty, because this is quite a lively song, and we'll see if we can do this one. There's a little bit where we really, really, really rely on the words. Do you know what I need? Do you want to even go there and then I can see what you're doing? Because Jonathan's so good at it. When he was in praise and dance many, many years ago, he used to say, you're getting it wrong again, mom. You know, so I used to have to try and watch him. So you can keep me right. Okay, how does that sound? Right, here we go. So, you, you know what? You don't have to do the actions, but you can stand and you can join in the song. And if you want to do the actions, please do. Let's see if we can do this. Right. Channel two. How wide can your smile be? How low can your belly go? How high can your arms stretch? No way near as deep or wide or high. There's no escaping this amazing, all embracing love, love, love. 
dance why dance why dance why dance why dance low dance low dance low deep wide high wide deep wide high wide wide high deep high deep wide high wide come on everybody let's hear you make some noise Now, we've still got some Holiday Club craft left through in the hall. If you want to go through, we've got some folks that are going to come through with you. You can have some fun through there, and we'll catch you up when we're going to have a cup of tea. Okay. Brilliant. Great to see you all this morning. And I'm glad there were some here that came to Holiday Club I think the rest of them are lying in a darkened room right now. So as we look at this whole theme of more and more, we're turning to Matthew's gospel. I don't particularly like cherry picking little bits. These two bits, as you can see, they're only a couple of chapters apart and they're all building to the same end. So I thought it was good to put them together because it actually fulfills what Jesus is trying, the message he's trying to get across to us. So Bill is going to read to us this morning. We have two readings this morning. First one is from Matthew chapter 25, reading verses 31 to 40. And the first one is called the final judgment. When the Son of Man comes as king and all the angels with him, He will sit on his royal throne, and the people of all the nations will be gathered before him. Then he will divide them into two groups, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the righteous people at his right and the others at his left. Then the king will say to the people on his right, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, come and possess the kingdom which has been prepared for you ever since the creation of the world. I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you received me in your homes, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me, in prison and you visited me. The righteous will then answer him, When, Lord, did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we ever see you a stranger and welcome you in our homes, or naked and clothe you? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king will reply, I tell you, whenever you did this for one of the least important of these followers of mine, you did it for me. And our second reading from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20, entitled, Jesus Appears to His Disciples. The eleven disciples went to the hill in Galilee where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, even though some of them doubted Jesus. Jesus drew near and said to them, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples, 
baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And I will be with you always to the end of the age. Amen. God bless to us this reading from his holy word. We now continue our worship by singing, Thine be the glory. It's time to sing. Let us bow before the Lord once more as we bring before him our prayers for others. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you of your everlasting and eternal love. We thank you for all of the deeper, the wider, the stronger, the greater, the forever. Lord, we ask that that becomes a reality in our world. For it is hard when people face war, as we see in Ukraine, with homes being destroyed, for them to really focus on that reality. Lord, it is hard for those who are struggling because of a cost of living crisis, which is worldwide, for those who are seeing homes destroyed with fire, for people that are living under threat from various governments, around the world, it is hard for them to focus on the depth and the width and the height and the greatness of your everlasting love. And yet your love is real. And we pray that that reality 
hits their lives. We pray for our world just now because the politics that is taking place looks like something out of a Bond film. And we ask, Lord, that the Prince of Peace, who already reigns, would move in power. The power that we know is stronger and stronger than anything we can begin to imagine. That our world will be transformed. And we ask, Lord, that we would be brave enough to step in up to the mark and allow it to start with us. Lord, we thank you for we know that you love us and care for us. And we have, out in our own families and in our own friends and in our own community, we have those that are struggling right now. And we pray that you would bring healing into the lives of those who were sick and comfort into the lives of those who have lost a loved one in a way that only you can. And peace into the lives that are those who are struggling with mental health issues or struggling to get by every single day, financially, emotionally. Lord, we ask that you would draw close with your presence and we take a few moments of silence while we name those that we carry in our hearts before you. Loving God, we know that you hear us. We've seen the wonderful things that you can do. And help us, Lord, to see them in our own day and speak out as witnesses as we make our prayers to you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to sing another beautiful song just now. That it's the song that has the chorus that says, freely, freely. So let's stand and sing it together. Nowadays, if we want to publicize an event, 
we can do a little bit more than just sticking up a poster in a shop window. With the advancement of social media, we can get the message out there. We can tell our, our friends on Facebook. We can get other people to share it across Facebook. We can even create an event. I remember one time when we were having our, remember in the days when we had our firework display, um, we always used to come back here for hot dogs after. We'd ordered about 350 hot dog buns and hot dogs, and we had soup and everything, and we suddenly realized that on Facebook it had gone, whoa, and over 10,000 people had viewed, and we thought, really? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. However, that doesn't really guarantee that people are going to come along. It is far better, the whole word of mouth recommendation, when somebody has already had an experience of something, and they pass that message along. I got quite a, a shock on Monday afternoon when I got a phone call because it turns out that what we call the get into summer events that take place across Angus had somehow, somehow flagged up at the Scottish government. And so the phone call was made to the person who organized all of that to say the First Minister would like to come to Angus to visit one of these projects, which one would you recommend? And she re recommended ours. Because she's been, she'd seen, she'd also heard from other people as well. So that kind of word of mouth recommendation can go a long way. But what I need you to understand is when Jesus was saying to his disciples, right, go out there, tell everybody what you've seen and what you've witnessed, be my witnesses, it was more than just saying, go and have a chat with folks about this. Because when you think about it, just telling somebody isn't necessarily going to make any difference. Many, many years ago, when Jonathan was only a baby, we were down in Blackpool, and my brother and I decided to go on the Pepsi Max, which was, I thought was brilliant. You know that thing that takes two weeks to get up the very first bit, you know? It's, um, now, when I came off, I go over to Graham, and I said, wow, that was absolutely brilliant. You coming on? Nope. It didn't matter how much I told him of how excited I was. Oh, no, it was honestly brilliant. Yeah, that's fine. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm not coming, you know? And what we need to understand is he wasn't just saying to them, just go and tell folks. He said to them, go and make disciples. Go and make followers. Now, that's a whole different kettle of fish. I can tell somebody what a brilliant movie I've just seen. It doesn't mean to say that they are going to go and watch it. We all have different tastes. Why would just a recommendation just get somebody to go and do it? And he wasn't just talking about folks that would just have a passing interest. Oh, yes, that sounds nice. I'll maybe pop along and have a little look and see what... No, no, he's talking about people who were then going to be real followers. And for that, it needs relationship and trust. For someone to take the time to get to know people, to forge relationship and to trust them before they might even think about taking that a little bit further. That's just the reality of the world in which we live. Please don't think that the people 2,000 years ago in Jesus' day were just kind of naive, little innocent, gullible folks that would just do something that the next person came along. They also had these itinerant preachers who would tell them all kinds of things and then expect them to give them a meal. They'd heard it all before as well. I don't know what they did in those days when they had the little villages and towns. Not like nowadays when we can phone and say to our neighbor, that's the Jehovah's Witnesses coming down the street. Okay? 
I don't know what they did then, but I'm sure they had a way. Maybe they put washing on the line or something. I don't know. But they just weren't a bunch of gullible folks. They were hard-nosed. They were living in tough times. The Romans were there. They couldn't stand them. They had a total prat of a king that they couldn't stand either. They were fed up of it all. What were priests and Herod and the Romans as well? Enough already. Oh, no, here's somebody else going to tell us how we should live our lives. Thank you. It was going to take a lot of persistence. And you can get a glimpse of what it was going to take when we look at that earlier passage. Because in Matthew 25, Jesus is talking and he's gearing them up and he's moving them towards the events of the cross and the resurrection. He's giving them all of this kind of information. And in that passage, you can see the focus, God's focus. And when he talks about sorting out the sheep and the goats, sometimes we think, well, what's the big deal? That's obvious. You need to remember that in their neck of the woods at that time, we were talking about Jacob's sheep and goats. Which one's which? Let me tell you that the one on your left, that's the sheep. What? That looks like a goat to me. That's actually the sheep. And this little fella here, on the right-hand side, he's the goat. They looked almost identical. It was important for the farmers of the day to be able to sort them out. Why? Because when it came to those colder nights, and it can get very cold over there, I've been over there in the colder nights, and it's bitterly cold. The goats don't have the thick, woolly coat that the sheep have, and they need to be taken in to cover. And if you look a little bit harder at the one on the left, you'll see that he's got this thick, woolly coat compared to the one on the right. So not quite so easy as you would imagine. And that's there for a reason, because the Lord Jesus Christ is talking to his own people. And what he's saying is, there's those that can kind of have a, a kind of a half belief and it's out there somewhere, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah, I can go along with that, that's fine. And there's those that allow it to impact on their lives and make a difference. There are those that will talk a good story. And we've, we've all, we all know people, in fact, when I say we know people that could talk a good story, we can probably think of someone right now. And then there's those who walk the talk. And the ones who walk the talk, they're the ones that Jesus says, I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you received me in your homes naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me. Goes on to say, I was in prison and you visited me. You, you, your love, in a sense, went wider and wider as we were talking about. We should never, ever underestimate the work of the people that have been running the breakfast club. We should never underestimate the work of those who take out food parcels for us every week. We should never underestimate the folks that go and pick up from Greg's every night, or Aldi, or Asda, or Tesco. It's a commitment. It's a big commitment. Week after week after week. But it walks the talk, folks, as we reach out into the community. We make a difference for the Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, sometimes we can do that through our projects here, which is great, and we always need more help. And other times we could do that right where we are, in our own family circles, with our own friends, because we go that extra mile. 
and we make that difference. The whole point of the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, when these disciples were going out there, they were going to be telling people the most amazing things and saying, we know because we saw it. But it was going to be more than that, folks. It was going to say, and it made a difference in our lives. It has transformed me. I am not the person that I was before. And then through the love of God, they would allow that to be spread in their community as they stepped up to the mark and they did the necessary. Remember when Jesus says the little line about, as you do this to the least of these, and he says these followers of mine, bear in mind that he's telling them to go out there and make everyone followers. Everyone. Jesus came for the world, not just for those who were prepared to follow him. So that means that the world is our responsibility too. It is brilliant to have family time. I was actually really looking forward to coming in this morning. I just felt as if I had so much to tell everyone, really, really excited. And that's those that are here and those that are watching at home. However, the, the, it goes on. That excitement continues. There are so many more stories to tell, so many more people whose lives we can touch. I am so grateful for every single person that has helped. And I don't just mean through Breakfast Club, and that's been a lot of work, or through Holiday Club, and that's been a lot of work, or the Fun Day but also those that every single week roll up to the mark and, and things are about to start again. A huge commitment. Friday night youth clubs, the guilds, everything's about to start again. A commitment. And it's a massive, we owe a massive debt to all of the people who are committed we owe a massive debt to those who pray. There are those who pray at home for us. And Margaret, thankfully, keeps in touch with people on our behalf. There are those who gather here on a Thursday to pray and to cover us all in prayer. That is what family is about. That is walking the talk. And whatever the future holds... What we know is that as we walk the talk and follow the Lord Jesus Christ, we will go in the right direction. I thank God for the family that we have here every day. And I'm excited for the people that we touch every day as well. There are potential in this community for the love of God to, to, to be able to touch every single one. And it is great that the Lord Jesus Christ leads us to be part of all of that. So let's talk to him right now. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your vision for our world. We thank you for the energy and the inspiration that you provide. We thank you for the lives that have been touched by your great love. And we pray that that continues to grow. We thank you for everyone who has helped before. If people hadn't already done loads and loads of work and shown that commitment and walked the talk, we would not be here. And we have a massive debt of gratitude for them and we thank you for them. And we pray for all of those who serve right now that you would continue to encourage and inspire, that we would not grow weary. We pray, Lord, for every single person in our community, for each one has the potential to be touched by you and that you would open the doors for us to grow your kingdom right here. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 
And we take a moment just now as we take up our offering. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your many gifts. We thank you for your many blessings. And today we make our gifts to you. We ask that you would touch them, Lord, that you would bless them, that you would increase them, that we would see your kingdom grow right where we are. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm not going to bother giving all of the intimations all over again, apart from I, I can't tell you how excited I am about a Guild Coffee morning. Uh, it's so good. It seems like it's such a long time since we've been able to have a Guild Coffee morning. And I always said, you couldn't get a better cup of coffee anywhere. So don't forget about the Guild Coffee morning. It'll be good to see everybody, and it'll be good to have a good chat and a catch-up. Again, a huge thank you to everyone who's helped over the summer and who's helped all of last week. And also to people like Pat, Jeanette, who are in but behind the scenes getting food parcels ready, and Paula, who is here every single week, and the army of people who take food out and collect food for us. It's a huge commitment, and, so, and thank you so, so much. Don't think for one second that we take it for granted. Has to be said that because of the activities last week and through the summer, we have got one or two people more that have volunteered to get involved. And the more, the merrier for all of that kind of thing. And I'll be passing that information on later. Please don't rush off at the end. Please stay and have a cup of tea and a chat. And we're going to close by singing a brilliant old hymn, one that kind of encourages us to speak out, to tell out the story. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Let's stand to sing.
So now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you evermore. Amen.